Today I'm going to share what I realized about affirmations and this is in response to a video I made two years ago where I did robotic affirmations for about 10 hours straight and then made a follow-up video as a result of weird things happening in my life. After that video, long term, I went through the most radical transformation. And disclaimer, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not a financial millionaire, let's say. But a spiritual one, I have gone through so much growth as a result of going through that exercise, I believe at least. So I'm gonna break this video down into two parts. The first part is gonna be catching you up just on a crazy journey of what happened since that video. And then the second part is gonna be insights I gained from a two year stint I took shortly after catching us up till now in Israel. Part one, what happened during that time? What inspired that video originally was that I quit my job as a software engineer after many, many years of wanting to do it and not doing it. But I pushed myself through that experience and I knew that the old version of me got me to that moment of quitting, but it wasn't gonna get me where I wanted to go, which is to be an ultra successful millionaire, mega millionaire, whatever. So I did that video, and then shortly after, I got some business opportunities. The opportunities panned out, I got a, a couple thousand dollars from that experience, and my clients and I parted ways on good terms. But that's not where the real change happened. The real change happened inside, it changed me. I was confident, and I was open to new opportunities. And what ended up happening was shortly after I went to this uh, event called Vid Summit, which was this YouTube conference, and I had a really wild experience. I ended up getting into a VIP YouTube party. I bought a general admission ticket and somehow ended up in the hotel room of Naz Daily, who is one of the biggest creators worldwide. I ended up at a private Dave and Buster's party with a bunch of famous YouTubers. And that video was actually a YouTube video on its own and I will link it over here so you can see that if you wanna see that experience. And then after this YouTube event, <clears throat> I ended up at a Tony Robbins event where I went through the most magical transformation. I ended up inviting my estranged father who left me at four years old back into my life at 25, building a relationship with him. I ended up breaking up with my girlfriend. We went our own ways, unfortunately. And then I ended up moving to Israel for two years. All of these different life events were things in my subconscious that I knew I wanted to do, but I wasn't confident enough to do for years until I built this new identity from doing these affirmations. And now I'm here today. I'm actually here in Chicago where I was born, my hometown. Unfortunately, as I record this video, my dad, who I invited back, who was estranged, he died a couple days ago, and the funeral is tomorrow as I record this video. So a lot has happened in the last two years, and I really wanna share with you what I realized about affirmations. It's not coming from nowhere. I think it's safe to assume, no matter what your religion is or your background, there's some power that is out there in the universe that after you, you've, do, you've done enough affir affirming, or you've done enough assuming if you wanna say a lot of assumption, that the world changes in your favor. The world <laughs> bends to your will in some way to where you can have this new reality or this new persona. And if there is no power, then it would be all in your head. So there's clearly something there. It's not coming from nowhere. What I'm arguing for myself in my own reality from these past two years and this experience I've gone through is that power is God. Now I'm not gonna tell you what to believe in. That's not the purpose of this video. But I will say there is a God according to my beliefs. And when we're saying affirmations, what we're doing is we're changing our subconscious so much that our being wants with all our heart and soul. And then our Heavenly Father sees that crying out for what we want and it gets brought into our reality. In Judaism, the word for prayer is lehit palel and it's a reflexive word. So prayer is really an affirmation and Jewish males practice prayer three times a day around breakfast time, lunch time and then in the evening. So we're saying the same thing over and over and over again until it affects our heart. And then when our subconscious gets changed, God sees we want this in our being and then we get the thing we want. Another word for prayer actually in Judaism is avoda shebalev, which is 
the service of the heart. So what we're doing when we're manifesting and we're doing affirmations is we're saying things so they penetrate us. We're not just saying words and then magic, abracadabra, and then something comes. We're changing ourselves. And then when we have changed, there has been a new alignment that God says, okay, you deserve this thing now. And then it, and he brings it into this world for you. And that was something I realized it's not coming from nowhere. And that's why you know, people are asking, do you say it with or without emotion? 100% with emotion. When I went to Tony Robbins events, he taught another form of affirmations called incantations, where you say the same thing. And if you watch my video where I'm saying it for 10 hours straight, you see kind of like this structure. You, you uh, emphasize different words. You say it with different reflections, with different intonations, where you like, I am amazing. I am amazing. Or I don't chase, I attract. What belongs to me will come and find me. I don't chase, I attract what belongs to me. You keep going and going and you, you change it until something changes in you and then that's when the real change happens in your life. So affirmations at, at, at its core are trying to get to the center of you, change you, and then the change in the universe happens when God decides that it's time for you to get that thing. And there's been so many times when, we, when we're praying for something and we don't get answered or we don't get the thing we're affirming for. For example, I, I'm not a millionaire yet, but I didn't know when I was gonna go to Israel and I was gonna have this spiritual experience. I have another video called How Yeshiva is Changing My Life. But in a nutshell, I was chasing the wrong goals. See, the problem with affirmations is that you're desiring certain things. You want money, you want power or status, you want possessions, or you wanna attract a woman or man into your life. There's no saying that that's the real you who wants those things. You might think you want those things, but if you've done enough work on yourself, when you peel back all the layers and you get to the essential you, your desires change. And I've learned from my last two years, the ultimate rut zone, which is in Hebrew, which means desire that you can have is to align your will with God's will. And when you align your will with God's will, he aligns his will back at you. So if you desire something after you're working on yourself and you're aligning yourself with his will, then you get a million dollars because you want to give to a charity. There might be some really altruistic or beautiful reason. But you have to work on yourself while you're working on these affirmations. Now, that's the beauty of prayer. When in Judaism, we pray with fixed words. And often, or more often than not, the words themselves are King David's Psalms. We're aligning ourselves with the ultimate version of ourselves until it penetrates us. And then we get the best reward we can, which is that connection with the source that created us, our creator. I'm saying this ironically as my dad just passed away, my estranged father. And I've been going through this crazy experience here, but that's the truth. There's a bigger power, the bigger picture happening. Step one, there's you. Step two, there's God. And then there's the thing you want, but you don't get that thing until you're ready for it spiritually. We have free will which is one of the most beautiful things about this existence we're in. We have the ability to pursue, to do whatever we want, to choose. We also get to choose good. We get to choose the right path. We get to choose the best path. And when you affirm yourself in the direction of the divine, in my opinion, that's the best path. So that's kind of what I've been doing in the last two years and reaffirming myself through prayer to align myself as much as possible with God's will. And I wouldn't pursue the things I pursued two years ago because I'm constantly changing and I feel like maybe you are too. I know you are. Look at your you know, videos of you as a kid, not just physically, but you, you know, a lot of people wanted to be firefighters when they were kids. Not, and some people are given the gift of knowing what they want from a young age, but most people change. Most people grow up. Most people mature. Affirmations give you the power to carve out the version of you that you want. And that's a very strong power because you get to be in the pilot seat of your own life. So who do you want to be? Then you affirm it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.